This week's episode is brought to you by Capital Financial Advisory Group for all your retirement needs. Broadcasting from coast to coast, it's the Financial Safari with your host, Coach Pete Deruda. You'll hear from some of the nation's top financial professionals. So stick around and find out how to make it through the jungle of the financial world right here on the Financial Safari. Welcome to Financial Safari. Hey, I'm Jackie Selby, your consumer advocate, and I have Dave Perkins, senior consumer advocate, and Greg Berrien. Greg Berrien of Capital Financial and Insurance. He is your man. We are going to talk about some comprehensive, I suppose you could call these scenarios within the first meeting. Scenarios. Scenarios. Oh, and then we have a a strategy du jour also coming up today. We're excited Mm. about that. Fictional Frank is going to be making a $500,000 appearance. So this will be fun. He's getting paid 500 grand? (laughs) No. (laughs) No. We don't have that kind of budget here. Dave, can you get us into the questions on this comprehensive approach? Absolutely. I mean, you you know, you're, you're working on always comprehensive plans. They don't all look the same, but comprehensive plans for everyone. So we're gonna go through some questions that you need to have the answers for for it to be a comprehensive plan. So why don't we start with Social Security? Oh, oh hey. the, the white whale. <laughs> what about if you're single versus married? How could it be different? As you guys know, I mean, I, I go into detail on this a great deal. Now, the thing about Social Security, it has nothing to do with age so much as really what your objective is and what's going on in your life. Okay. So let's say you are 62 years old and you um, are still working, you're making 50,000 a year and you are eligible for social security. Is it a good idea to take it? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. Why not? not? Well, because what will happen is the income threshold on that is only $20,000, $20,000, $21,000 a year. Now, but the difference is though, is let's say you are no longer working, you're 62 and you're bringing in $50,000 $50,000 a year in rental income or $50,000 a year uh, from your from, from your investments and things like that, then you can go forward without any kind of penalty. Oh, that doesn't okay. affect it then? No, no. It has to, it, the, the whole process is through, through your earned income. W- through, through earned income. Well, yeah. Does that include a consulting fee or something of this nature? Can you earn a consulting fee? Are you asking for a friend? Well, that, <laughs> well, well a consulting a fee, a, a, a consulting <laughs> fee, what I would consider that earned income. Okay. You know, that, that, that's absolutely earned income because that's, you know, you know, you're getting 1099. It's it's it's, it's different. I mean, and of okay. course, you get 1099 for for earnings from the you know when you can take money out of your 401k. But on consulting, that's definitely earned income. Okay. So you know, you, you can't count that. And now, here's the thing. Also, if you're single, and if you're no longer working, now we're going to a different scenario here. Okay. Then I do recommend turning on your social security. Uh, earlier than normal because let, let's say you've um, you've put a hundred thousand dollars into this into this strategy hundred thousand and you decide that you're gonna hold out and you're gonna wait you're just gonna live off your 401ks your investments you're not gonna take out your Social Security for uh, five more years well that's great because you can, it keeps going up seven and a half percent well let's say on year two you die okay it's and gone. you and you and you're not married well, what'll happen is that hundred thousand dollars goes back to the Social Security Administration, oh, the federal no. government, yeah. and no, we, we know don't. how prudent they are <laughs> and how wise they are with our money and how they don't waste it on boondoggle things. Boondoggle. So, <laughs> so the answer is you may want to consider taking it out then. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it is different, and with spouses, you have to think about the well, higher earner. With, with a spouse, uh, if you, if you, if you're married, and, and once again. If you're not going to go into that penalty, once again, also, folks, just just be uh, clear. Also, if you do go into that penalty um, and you do you do end up giving up money, so it's one dollar for every two dollars, you do get that money back when you turn your full retirement age. Okay, so there's oh, something. Oh, that's good then. But but okay. if you are married, I like to see the smaller Social Security check turn theirs on at age 62, and the larger one go as deep as 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 possible for you know you know minimum 65 to 67, maybe even 70, mm-hmm. depending on, on, on how everything works. Okay. That full retirement age for a guy like you who was born 1958 or before. Yeah, I'm born 59. So, so you were born in 59. Uh, 59 is um, 66 and 10 months. And then the then it becomes uh, 1960, it's um, 
Six. Uh, seven, 67 years old, right. and it, 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 there's no fluctuation after that at this point in time. At this point. Well, 1958, <laughs> right. Social Security mm -hmm. is 66 and eight months. So every for every year down, it goes down two months. Okay. Yeah. Um, what about budgeting and not just year to year, but even decade to decade in your retirement? What do well, you have to consider? Yeah, you know, budgeting is, is huge. And the thing is, you know, as we've talked about on multiple occasions, is, you know, you, you don't say, Oh, okay. I only spent three thousand dollars in March. <laughs> okay, yeah. March is kind of an easy month to get by, unless you're running down to Florida for you know. <laughs> uh, but right. as opposed to the six thousand dollars you spend in December for Christmas, mm -hmm. for Christmas, as opposed to possibly you know the other five thousand you spend because your taxes are due. You know, you have to look at every single month, come up with an annual budget divided by twelve, and that's how you know you. That's how you know what you have, and so you know when you have to. When you know when you have to take money out. You know what your budget's going to be overall for the for the for the year. Sure. What about a legacy? How much you want to leave to your grandkids, kids, grandkids? Well, well, you know that that, that all depends. You know, uh, first of all, everybody's different. Everybody. So, some people, you know, I mean, I, I meet them all the time. They really they really don't care about how much money that they leave hmm. to their kids. It's just like, hey, it's my money. I earned it. And I'm going to spend it, mm -hmm. and, and and that's that's completely up to them. And they may have life insurance or something yeah. for or, them, or they right? may have life insurance. They're yeah. sitting on a house, you know. As as far as I'm concerned, I told my mom, I say, hey, mom, you check out with a zero balance, and I'm good with that. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, just just enjoy your life, have fun, go see Neil Diamond. It's been like seven times, you know. What I mean, so, so she, you know, she she does enjoy her life, does whatever she wants, and I don't really care what's left at the end of the day. Yeah, you know. Uh, but some people there, you know, it's like, some, you know, the younger generation is screaming when parents decide to take out, you know, uh, to do their, you know, take money out of their house to live on. You like know, the reverse the, mortgage. The reverse mortgage. Or, right. Going, oh, no, we're going to lose our money on the inheritance. It's like, boo-hoo. <laughs> Go right. away, you know? <laughs> you know. But but uh, one thing also is, you know, if you have excessive amount of money, I always recommend having, you know, you know, it, 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 always having a trust. Also, I recommend a trust if you have a blended family, mm -hmm. because you want you want you want to see the world blow up. You you just you just die with a couple million bucks in your pocket, and without without distinct definition of where your money's going, it 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 gets it becomes lunacy. And also, I'd like a trust for folks who, who may have a, a, a child, a grandchild, great grandchild with special needs. Yeah. Some somebody who requires, who will require needs for the rest of their life. That's when I. That's when I think that's really, really important. Also, in that. I, I was going to ask you real quick. Probate. You also want to avoid oh. probate. 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 Yeah. Probate. Thank Do you. we? Oh, oh, let's go. Let's talk about this. We'll go further into probate in our next segment. How's that sound? Sounds okay, good. Let's do. Let's continue that again. Use the number on your screen to reach out to Greg Barry and and thanks for tuning in today to Financial Safari. Memories with Grandpa. My first job. My fourth job. Crazy road trips. Our first date. Meeting, Meeting our, our son. son. Exploring our world. Our world. Family and friends. Our, our special, special song. song. Secure your retirement by meeting with a financial advisor. year 2023. I mean, I never thought we'd ever get to the year 2020 or 20, 2000, but here we are. And a lot of people are, are, are wondering what's going to happen in the next 10 years. It, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but what do you, what do you see happening in the, in the money world the next 10 years? Well, I think technology is going to play an ever increasing role in virtually everything that we do. So there, you're going to see trading strategies, coming out of the woodwork. You're going to see people like my firm, the CPA firm, going through transitions because AI is going to start doing pretty much all of their jobs as far as the technical side. It's one of the reasons why I'm in the cons consulting business with firms such as that, to get them more on the advisory side and less on the, you know, the mundane filling out returns and all that, because a lot of that's going to be done right. uh, by, by AI. Listen, I am an optimist. This is the United States. Correct. We are in troubling, troubling times right now. And I think 
as, as it relates to your financial plan, your retirement plan, whatever the case may be, it does pay to have a very long-term perspective on things such as the stock market and such as real estate, which, you know, and I'm listening to the presentation here, and it clearly makes a heck of a lot of sense to me when you can go short-term, get decent rates of return, and wait out the potential storm yeah. that may be ahead of us. So once again, if you if you can run your financial life a little bit more conservatively than perhaps we ran it up to and including COVID, I, I think most people will benefit by that. How important is it to have income built into your retirement portfolio? I think we just have to be a little bit more careful with the riskier investments and focus more on income than on growth. Yep. Maybe brought that up in the real estate market. Uh, he doesn't see, from what I can hear and understand, he doesn't see where there's an upside in a lot of traditional real estate. Go out and buy a condo, rent it out to somebody. Buy a small apartment building, a duplex, a fourplex. He doesn't see an upside because the interest rates are too high. I would settle on something that gave me some kind of either guaranteed income or very safe and secure income. Go to yourmoneydesk.com. We have a treasure trove of resources on the site where you can explore concepts like this and, and just get to know your own retirement a little bit better as you head into it. One other site is retirementhelpcenter.com. Yes, we'll put them on the screen here, retirementhelpcenter.com. Videos, we try to keep them four minutes or less. We do. Because the attention spans these days are about <laughs> four minutes or less. And so, but they explain about anything you could ever thought of. We've done them on like everything from crypto to safe money to risk money to retirement income. Both of these sites now have multiple calculators on them. So be sure to head over to yourmoneydesk.com, retirementhelpcenter.com. Benjamin Franklin once said, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. You've spent so much time working and putting money away for retirement. The question is, where should I be investing my retirement savings? The stock market. This is probably the first thing that popped into your head when you heard the word investing. There are so many different products to choose from in the market. Index funds, ETFs, individual stocks, IRAs, 401ks, etc. ad nauseum. If there's anything to remember, it's a gamble. Over history, the stock market has been a great place for people to grow wealth. The problem is, it depends on when you get in and when you get out. So if you're in the market, you really need to have an exit strategy. First, you have to have an entrance strategy. Don't buy high and sell low. We see a lot of people do that. So if you can get in low, then as the stock goes up, you're locking your gains in. Now, you may have a big gain, and you're keeping that gain, and you're bragging all your friends about it, but you haven't liquidated or realized that asset. Keep in mind, in the stock market in particular, you are not up until you're out. Until you liquidate some of that money, all you have is a paper gain, realize that gain, and then maximize your retirement with that. Next up is bonds and securities. When a company needs funds or is in debt, they can issue a series of bonds to cover those expenses, allowing investors to receive a fixed amount of interest on the bond. In other words, the same way that you can get a loan from the bank, companies can get bonds from you. As interest rates go up, bond prices go down. We're in a very low interest rate environment and bond prices have been bad. They're not gonna get better as interest rates go up. You're gonna get trapped in bad bond funds. So be very careful about stocks, bonds, even mutual funds. When I say the word insurance, a lot of people probably think about some cartoon animal in a commercial trying to save you 15% or more. Emily, my offer is the best. Did you know that life insurance and annuities could be an important part of your retirement plan? From generating tax-free income to creating guaranteed income stream, it's on your side like a good neighbor. There's a whole lot of confusion out there about in insurance products like annuities and even life insurance. There are some good ones, there's some bad ones. And again, these insurance companies would not have these products if they were not good fits for somebody. Doesn't mean it's a good fit for you though. But if you're looking for a lifetime income you can't outlive, there's some annuity options that may make sense. I don't like variable annuities because you can lose your principal. The only annuities I like 
secure your principal, make it guaranteed. They grow your money every year, they protect your growth, and then they give you lifetime income you can never outlive. And then life insurance utilized the proper way can give you a tax-free retirement. It can even help you by using your death benefit to pay for long-term care. So I look at, look at the new life insurance policies as the Swiss Army knife in the financial and retirement and wealth building community because there's no bigger place to grow wealth for your future generations than life insurance. Real estate is another class of investment that has its own set of pros and cons. More than just buying a house, real estate investments could include renting, flipping, or investing in real estate investment trusts. But according to Coach Pete, you may want to avoid that last one. There's nothing wrong with real estate. Let me say that again. There's nothing wrong with real estate. I have three properties myself. I have a big business building, and I've got a townhouse, and I've got a house. So it doesn't make sense to buy something just to hold it if you don't have a use for it. So we use the building, and the building is growing in value. Now, one thing I absolutely hate are real estate investment trusts. They're sold with fancy brochures to get you to pool your money to invest in big buildings and big businesses and lease holdings of real estate. The problem there is they are non-traded, non-traded REITs. That means once you get in, you can never get out until it becomes public. It's almost like the Hotel California of the investment world. So be very careful about the real estate investment trust. Nothing wrong with real estate, but one thing I have against real estate is you have to pay real estate tax every single year. So you're paying to, to own your building. <laughs> Even if you haven't paid off, you still have taxes, insurance, and upkeep. So keep that in mind before jumping in to real estate investing. Now let's talk cash, crypto, and coinage. When most of us think of cash, we think of this. When in reality, cash and commodities look a lot more like this. Who knows? We've seen people make a fortune. We've also seen people that made the fortune lose it back. And we've seen people that lost to begin with. So crypto is very risky. It's just like the stock market. We have to be very careful in that. Gold and silver, good way to hedge against inflation, they say. But the problem I have with silver and gold, it just sits there when you buy it, it earns 0% interest. The bottom line is everyone's situation is different. Things to consider, your time until retirement, your desired return on retirement savings, and how much risk you can handle in retirement. We've all encountered that fast-talking salesman, whether it's buying a car, maybe a new house, and it can be very overwhelming. Uh, I'm consumer advocate Thomas Lipscomb. I'm here with best-selling author, Coach Pete Deruta. I'm excited to discuss this book. We're gonna be discussing one of your books, Fine Print Fiasco. Yep. <laughs> now, what, may I ask, what inspired you to write this book? Did you have a particular situation, maybe with a timeshare, buying a car, where you just thought, this doesn't feel right? Well, you may ask anything you want, Thomas, by the way. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I talk to folks, in the, I'm in the financial arena now 31 years. Wow. And so talking to folks every single day, and it's the seem to be the same problems that existed with a lot of folks. The same dirty tricks were played on a lot of different people. So I took notes, and I found all the warning signs, or all the ones that I identified, okay. and all the dirty tricks that are played, and put them in a book. So now you understand if you're hearing a certain thing, alarm bells should start going off. Mm -hmm. We'd show you what to be look, look out for when you're buying a car, buying a house, getting a new mortgage, uh, financial guys trying to sell you a variable annuity, all That's the right. reasons why you should not touch a variable annuity. There mm -hmm. are some other ones, another other annuities, the cousins, that are a lot better than variable when your money is not at risk and there are no financial termites. Risk, fees, commission. Absolutely. Wise words. Again, we're here with best-selling author Coach Pete DeRuta discussing his book, Fine Print Fiasco. To find out more or to get a copy of the audiobook, just visit fineprintfiasco.com and stay tuned because we have more content on the way. This is Joe. Joe has a steady job, a house and a family, but he doesn't know his retirement plan sucks. Really? He's paying high brokerage fees and his retirement savings is not safe or protected. Joe might be screwed, but he doesn't have to be. Contact us today for your no cost, no obligation retirement review and second opinion package. Do you hear that? That's me enjoying my retirement. Traveling around the world to play golf, where I want, when I want, with whomever I want. Even got some customized clubs. Because years ago, I rolled over my IRA with the help of a local trusted advisor. 
Contact us to get started today. This is a no-cost, no-obligation retirement review to help educate and enlighten. Welcome back into Financial Safari. I'm Jackie Selby, your consumer advocate, with Dave Perkins, consumer advocate, and Greg Berrien, who is the man of the hour. You always are here on the show. Greg Berrien of Capital Financial and Insurance, and we are going to talk about the questions to make a comprehensive retirement plan comprehensive. And one of those, Greg, is you want to avoid probate, right? What happens is, let, let's say you uh, hired somebody to come cut down a tree. Mm -hmm. And they, they, and you're going to come back and you're going to pay them the money. And it was a $500 job and you died in a car accident on the way home. Okay. Well, that person did their job. They have a right to their money, but all of a sudden everything gets locked down. Everything gets shut down. It's going to take a while for them to okay, get paid. So what happens is that, that, that person has to basically file a claim against your estate. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when he proves that he did what he did, then of course the estate would then give would, would give that money. Uh, so things like that, th those are legitimate claims. Those are, then, then, <laughs> then, then, then we have the kids of our brother-in-law, Phil. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, we're like, going, oh, I smell money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and so they can start laying some claims and which is why sometimes a trust, especially with larger estates or, or mixed, uh, mixed fa blended families works really, really well because they can lay a claim out there and you know who's going to get rich? The lawyers. Mm -hmm. Okay. And next thing you know, that could basically just drain the estate and it's mm -hmm. just, it's just not right. And it's, it's, it's bad. It yeah. is. And we, we've done episodes on celebrities who this has happened to. So many celebrities um, depart the world without um, a will or they don't have the appropriate trust. Oh, uh, uh, Co Coach loves to buy those things. He's, he, he, if, if you're all come to our office, folks, in, in Apex, we've got <laughs> just these, like, probably, I, I had like six or seven of yeah. these, these big, big posters with, with all different people and people you wouldn't you would not believe around there that that uh, they call they call the hall of the hall of the hall of shame, hall of, shame. Of, of bad decisions made people who literally died without will without trust and, and these are famous people and it's just it's unfortunate but it does happen do we have time for one more do one more yeah, let's, bring let's our not, special what else guest we in well i mean since you mentioned reverse equity earlier what about your home the mortgage or, or the equity in it what should you consider doing with that in strategically well at, at this at this phase of the game uh with mortgage rates at eight percent if you're sitting on a mortgage with three three and a half two and three quarter percent you ain't moving nowhere all right th th this is why this is why people they're, they're, this is why the real estate market rather is so stagnant right now because people don't want to leave these mortgages that they're paying 3% on. They, they, unless they're going to go into a house and they're going to basically pay cash for it. Mm. And, and so if, if you're sitting on a mortgage like that and, and you want to do a home equity loan, your home equity loan is going to come into 8%. All right? That's not a good idea. So mm. many times I'll be sitting there talking to, you know, to uh, some you know, listener. And then all of a sudden they say, yeah, I see, you know, I will a hundred thousand dollars on my mortgage. And, uh, I said, well, what's your interest rate? And they go, Oh, it's, it's about 3.1. And I went, you're not in a hurry to pay that off. Are you? And they go, no, no. <laughs> with, with his little wry smile. Uh, you know don't I mean? blame them. No, no, because, and, and I mean, you can literally put your money into a money market nowadays and, and, and earn money as opposed to paying off the mortgage sure, and absolutely. a money market. Sure. Well, special guest time. Yes. yes. Let's let's enter into our strategy du jour. Strategy du jour. Yes. Who, who's our special should guest? I, should Please. I do some magic here? Yes. Uh, okay. Through the power of TV. Yes. Welcome. <laughs> Fictional Frank. Well, hello, Frank. Frank how are you doing? <laughs> Welcome Thanks. to the show. It's great, great to, to be you. here. Thank you. Thank you. So um, you have uh, come into some money. Frank, uh, you've inherited a sum of money. Ooh, do pray tell. It's five hundred thousand dollars, isn't that right, Frank? And that's you're still a lot of money. That's I'm correct. telling you, <laughs> that's that, that, that's that's some serious cheddar, man. Yeah. Huh? Some, somebody like Frank. Greg has an idea about what you can do with this money, and since you're still going to be working, you're fifty-eight. You're going to be working um, until sixty-five. And how much is Fra Frank? How much do you make a year? Frank makes a hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay, okay. So he's not really needing the money right doesn't now. Doesn't need the money and doesn't yeah. need any extra taxes, no. right? No. Right, no. Yeah, is, is Frank, are you married? Uh, yes. Okay, okay. Oh, okay, and, and does your spouse work? Uh, no, she's retired. She's retired. Okay, she's on Social Security, though. Yes. 
Yeah, you know, you know, folks, just just so you know, these are questions that we ask when we're sitting when you're sitting down. With Sounds me. like a consultation. <laughs> I, I, I really, yeah, I'm really having a conversation <laughs> with an image. Okay? Fictional frame. <laughs> we're, it's fictional we frame. Yeah, it's fictional. You're frame. doing a great job, Frank. <laughs> okay. So what should he do with that money? Uh, all right. So what, what what I'm looking at is if Frank's looking at to to probably he wants to you know make sure is is security important for you, Frank? Yeah, absolutely. Especially I want to leave money for the grandkids too. What? Not the kids, the grandkids. I'm skipping that generation. Okay. Skip, skip the kids. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're useless. Okay. So now we're looking, so you're 58. We're looking 20 years down the road, possibly, then 20 to 25 years down the road that you want this to, to accrue, right? Yes. Wow. And so, and what about, you know, I take it, you, you know, since you're still working, you don't want to take any extra tax burden, correct? No, I'm worried about tax implications on that money too. Mm, tax implications, oh, right? All right. So, uh, what 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 we did, you know, uh, just so our just so our audience knows, we already knew all these things, okay? Mm. Uh, and what we did is we uh, found a strategy that we're going to be able to put that five hundred thousand dollars into an account. Now, understand this, folks. When that five hundred thousand goes into the account, it's not going to open up with five hundred thousand dollars. What? 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 No, no. It is going to open up with five hundred and ninety thousand dollars. How's Whoa. that? Oh, this is looking even better now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you like that, Frank? You like this, about, Frank? Huh? This is this sound. This sound pretty sweet. All right. So here's the beautiful part about that. Of course, there there is a, a period of time where it wouldn't always be five hundred ninety, but it goes right into the comp value and the death benefit. So Frank, if you had a tragic accident and on year two. Your your grandchildren would get six hundred and twenty six thousand dollars. Hey, nice. hey, okay. But I'd so, be dead. But so that's okay. But, but you'd be dead. That yeah. that, that, that that's kind that's of a only downside. <laughs> it's the downside. It's a downside. It, it could be worse. Yeah. <laughs> My wife could try to kill me, but that's another story. <laughs> or that could be why you're dead, right? Yeah, that could be too. <laughs> okay. So, so, but here's so we're gonna we're gonna look down here. Okay, I gotta put my glasses Go ahead, on because right. I got I got Let's a little mic the, yes. I got micro font with old eyes here. All right. Let's look so down Frank, the road. So, Frank, tell me. Okay, I'm gonna tell you how this is gonna look. This is good. You are never gonna get a tax bill on this. Love that. How's that sound? Pretty good? Absolutely wonderful. Because right. why? Because this is being deferred. We're kicking that can down the road. You're getting triple compounding gains. You are never going to pay taxes because you're earning money on the tax savings, the principal, and the earnings. Hmm. And so on year 20, when you're 78 years old, wow. wow. That's a big number. I can see Dang. it. Dang. Yeah. Your grandkids are going to like you. It's going to be worth one7 Two million dollars, one million seven hundred twenty thousand one hundred and sixty-six dollars. That's based on an interest rate of seven percent compounding. Because when you're compounding, it gets to where you want to go a lot quicker. It's like kind of like turning on the superchargers of your car. Okay. Sure. And you, you don't have to have five hundred thousand dollars to have Greg do some magic for you. Uh, just go ahead and reach out to Greg. Um, the number is on the screen. You could book an appointment with him and talk to him about the amount of money uh, that you want protected. It's insuring the money, essentially, is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. Before we go, Frank, how Frank. do you feel about that? Fantastic. I love it. We love you, Frank. Thanks for stopping by Financial Safari. Have a great weekend.